Mihan Brumbuli, and today I want to present to you um, our efforts at Pragmadev towards a model-driven approach for the simulation of the Internet of Things. So I will start with some uh, the introduction that uh, it's fairly familiar to all of you here, I think. So we are talking about the Internet of Things. It's a concept that interconnects billions of smart objects and well, we take a part that we, we copy the smart and then attach some other words after it, so we, we get some uh, smart home applications, we get some smart grids, smart parking, or even other um, kinds of application from different domains, but uh, basically they are based on the same concept. So we have billions of interconnected smart objects. So one of the key characteristics there is that because of that, we have complex applications, and uh, because we are uh, we have physical hardware involved, we have heterogeneity, and we have distribution scale involved. So we are talking about autonomous network devices, uh, sensors and actuators. So we are talking about smart object that <coughs> interact with the environment, give us some feedback. Um, and also very important, they have a, a computational uh, capabilities and storage. So, the motivation behind this work, so I started by saying that we are talking about fairly complex systems and considering that we have billions and billions of smart devices coupled with, let's say, intelligent applications that we have to deploy, it is very essential for us to have a careful analysis prior to any real world deployment. So. However, the, the, uh, the question and the problem, the issue here is that a thorough analysis usually on a very complex system can be done if the application is already running. But there we are talking more about experimentation. And we all know that fairly large test beds are not exactly realistic, so we, we cannot uh, essentially deploy billions of devices. So what we all know is that simulation comes into help because we all know that simulation actually scales well. So it's a fairly uh, powerful tool for the analysis of complex systems. And however, the issue here is that it requires a model of the application, which means that we need to abstract, focus on the properties of the system or the application that are relevant, and come up with a model of it. Where is the problem? that because of this abstraction we need a validation of such a model prior to um, coming up with the results for a real world deployment afterwards. So dealing, uh, starting from that point we can deduce fairly simply that uh, we, we have basically a development process in its own. So coming up with a model for simulation for such a high uh, complex system is actually a, a deploy, uh, development process in its own. So what we need to do is we need to we need means to effectively abstract from such complexity. And we all know that modeling in its core has has the answers for that. And specifically the model driven <coughs> excuse me development paradigm. So what it means is that now we have models that drive the whole development process. So we start with a model of our system, but we don't start with the actual application and then go and build the model in order for simulating it, but we start with the model. So the model is the core of the whole development process. And one of the key aspects of the model-driven development paradigm is that such models can serve several purposes. One being, of course, the generation of the actual application that is ready to be deployed, which is of course of great interest, but also using the same models we can derive other models or other representation of the application that we can use for the analysis. In this case, for example, it can be a simulation model. Uh, we have been focusing on standardized uh, modeling languages to deal with these problems and specifically is the specification and description language which is an uh, ITUT recognized 
uh, standard and by using uh, this concept of models in the uh, SDL language we, uh, with formal semantics it is possible for us to uh, generate code which means actual applications to be deployed but also uh, uh, that can drive analysis via simulation so to give you a brief overview of how uh, the procedure in general looks so what we can do with SDL is that we can organize our system also talking here about kind of hierarchical representation of the system starting with blocks channels that interconnect these blocks with signals for communication and then we can uh, try to go down into the hierarchy we can decompose this architecture into other blocks and when we end up at the end of the hierarchical level we have processes so the process basically encapsulates the behavior the functional behavior of the system and of course signals are generated and consumed by those processes so by saying that processes encapsulate functional behavior of the system we need to, uh, we need to represent this and in SDL this is done by extending state machine communicating state machines uh, well basically we have states we have signals coming in signals going out we have a, a different control structure and so on and what is also important is that SDL also includes an action language so uh, and also abstract data types so basically we can capture the functional properties of our system using processes and also the organization using blocks however <clears throat> the question and the issues that we had uh, during uh, the conception of all our approach is that there was no notion of deployment so what was as SDL is uh, raises the level of abstraction but actually allows us to, to, to use this concept to capture the actual architecture and behavior of the system it remains at that level so it doesn't give us uh, an idea on how these pieces of our system that is the blocks or processes are distributed how will they run on the actual infrastructure so we need to capture that too and uh, to take care of that we decided to use deployment diagrams descriptions when we map actual components or part of the SDL description using the component symbol in the deployment diagrams and using the nodes so in this sense we can uh, describe or capture a certain scenario composed of thousands of nodes and also deploy certain parts or whole parts of our description SDL description or specification using those what is important now is that we actually need to also identify each of those so we actually used a fairly descriptive means for that that we assign IDs we keep it at a fair level of abstraction that means uh, we can then further uh, use any kind of identification for the nodes in the network or the components in this case in this example I have used for uh, can be used the TCP or UDP port for example for the components that represent parts blocks of the system and also IP addresses for example just to use the nodes another important issue here was um, external communication so before that I gave a, a description of the structure of the system the architecture there are also channels that are connected to the environment we, this means that this is fairly important for us because we have sensors and actuators so we need to communicate all the time with the environment however our aim here is to generate a model that we can use for the analysis so we also need to take care of that which means that we need to in, in a way to include uh, mm, uh, this communication in our description and because we are talking here about uh, a big number of nodes or instances that we need each of them uh, we need to identify them each of them separately and 
um, for example, provides external stimuli to each of them. So in that context, we came up with a fairly pragmatic solution. Uh, that means we decided to give that information using a, a tabular format where we have all the uh, combinations, uh, the ID combination of the nodes and the components representing part of the SDL specification, um, a timing, order, and also all the possible messages with parameters that are uh, supposed uh, to be sent uh, by the environment to the system. And the timing, it's, it's actually very important because it uh, defines also an order of those messages. So, having said that, uh, we can use uh, these models, that means an SDL model of our application, blocks, processes, state machines with abstract data types and also actions included, a deployment model of those components and also external stimuli in order to automatically generate code. Now, one important feature here that, well, uh, I have uh, passed a little bit is that, well, okay, we have a fairly abstract model here, but what about the communication protocols that we are using? I mean, I use some IDs there, but where are those actually? How they are brought into the model? Well, for that we decided to actually reuse what is there. And uh, we have chosen the NS3 network library, which is uh, fairly large in terms of protocol, protocol stacks, and other concepts of simulation. And uh, we defined a binding uh, meaning uh, starting from our deployment model within the nodes. Basically, the nodes provide the interface uh, between the components that are parts of the SDL system and the actual NS3 stack. So, so the basic idea is that uh, we start with an SDL model. And as I said before, we have Using uh, solely the, the, the SDL model, we have no means to describe this deployment or distribution of components. But uh, what is important with SDL, because of the formal semantics and everything involved, is that we can actually uh, carry out a fairly fine-grained simulation of the model. Which means that uh, we can actually simulate one instance, let's say, of our system. So if we consider a, a system uh, deployed in thousands of nodes of components, we start first by a fairly fine-grained simulation of the behavioral uh, properties of our system with uh, uh, an SDL simulator, which has uh, many functionalities uh, going through the model. But then, if we don't find any errors there, then we can say that we can deploy in terms of simulation. So we can go large scale. So for that, we have uh, developed the deployment simulator that we call, and we defined two levels of uh, handling the actual um, behavior of the distributed system. And uh, for that, uh, we wanted to actually visualize the whole uh, simulation. And uh, we do that at two levels. It distributed, meaning that we have a distributed view of the whole nodes described previously in the deployment diagram. So we can have thousands of nodes visualized. And what we decided to visualize there so that uh, the whole uh, running of the simulation can be clear is that we decided to visualize state changes and messages exchanged between the nodes. Well, yeah, but is that enough? Well, of course not, because probably we may identify problems in that level because, uh, for example, we see some state change not happening or happening that it shouldn't. So for that, we decided to go a little bit further. That is, we use the concepts and uh, the, the, the power of the actual SDL simulation uh, concept 
and uh, bring uh, the details of visualization there also into deployment simulator by means of also the st uh, standard language uh, called message sequence chart. So what it allows us to do is that if we actually identify a certain misbehavior at the distributed level, we can actually go into each of the nodes and have a detailed view of what's happening. So the provided interface looks uh, like this. So we can deploy a fair amount of nodes. And uh, each of these nodes is considered to run a certain piece of our SDL system that I call component. And using the identifiers, well, actually, uh, what happens is that it generates an NS3-based simulation. It runs it in the background, and in the meantime, it actually takes and reads all the events that are generated. I mean, events, events that are actually relevant by means of state changes, message exchange between the nodes. Um, and uh, what I mentioned before is that uh, if we actually want to go and have a look at what's happening inside there at a node, we can do that fairly simply and visualize all the internals of the nodes by means of uh, sequence charts. Um, uh, the philosophy of the tool is that, well, as I mentioned before, it, it runs the simulation and it can actually read and visualize all the, all the relevant events during the runtime, but uh, what is also important, after it is done, it is possible to actually replay the whole thing and uh, a step into it by means of time or event. So, you can, uh, it is possible to navigate uh, in an event-based manner or time-based manner. And of course, all the functionalities are also available. So, to conclude this talk, um, what we propose here is an approach for a module-driven analysis based on standardized languages with tool support. However, there are certain things that we actually need to improve and we think we should improve. First of all, uh, as I mentioned before, we came up with a fairly pragmatic approach into describing uh, external communication with the environment. Well, there are better means to do that and because we focus actually on standardized languages, we, we think that uh, the support for TTCN3 is one of them. Because TTCN3 plays fairly well with SDL, in, in principle, we can actually um, investigate and try to come up with a solution so that we can describe uh, this interaction, the external interaction using TTCN3. This will allow us, in plus, uh, in addition to describing external signals, also to test distributed behavior. And we are actually currently working on that by um, uh, um, defining an, uh, an approach for um, um, pseudo-parallel or interleaved execution of test cases so we can actually explore all possible interrelations between the distributed uh, instances. Um, and also automatic deployment because actually we have a fair amount of nodes, instances, independent instances, so we can uh, have a, a fair, uh, the same amount of test cases that we need to deploy in a distributed environment. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.